Welcome back and thanks for stopping. I'm Jeff and today I'm going to take you out with me to do morning chores and talk to you about the importance of, of animals. These animals here, they can be used as uh, dual purpose, one for laying eggs and also for meat. These girls in here, they've been laying a, a pile of eggs. Uh, they were born just this last year in June, and they, uh, they've been producing a pile of eggs, so I've been giving them an extra little ration of food just to make sure they're, just to make sure that their belly is full. Come on, watch out. As you can see, they've been going to town laying eggs. This morning already we've got about 15, 15, 16 eggs. Good job, girls. The other reason I was gonna take you with this morning is because I've got a little extra time uh, in between watering things, whether it be the, the cows, the pigs, the, the chickens. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, another important aspect of having animals. I could use another hand. That sure would be handy. You get it, Colton? Yeah. <laughs> All right, now pigs. Morning, Red. Good morning, Callie. How are you guys? Uh, how are you guys this morning? And pigs, we all know what pigs are good for. They uh, they can supply us with uh, with meat, with pork, um, as well as like right now they're in our my garden uh, and they they did some tilling. Uh, they're currently doing a bunch of fertilizing, um, so they're all around good good animals. So my, the water can always be an issue when it comes to winter time. The, the cold weather, if we leave water in the hose, uh, it ends up freezing and then you've got another bunch of issues. So what I do is I put the end of the hose down at the end of the hill and every set two to three days, I gotta go down there and then drag the hose back up so we can fill the water stock tank for the, for the cows, uh, the tank for the Red and Cali. And then uh, the water is for the chickens. Now the cows, I generally just feed them at night, but tonight is gonna get kinda late. And I don't want them to run out of hay, so we're gonna give them a, a chunk of hay, and then I've also been trying to tame them buggers up. So we're gonna try and see if, uh, see if we can pet a couple of them. Good morning, Lucy. Patty. Hey Ruby. <clears throat> now 
Now Ruby, Ruby's been, she's been a good, good heifer. Sometimes she lets me come up and pet her. Sometimes she plays a little hard to get. Nope, yep, you're playing hard. Oh yeah. But Ruby, I'm taking a liking to this Ruby. Is that your favorite spot there? Huh? Yeah, oh boy. That feels good, huh? Yeah, good girl. Yep. There we go. Now before we before we try to coax Patty into letting me pet her, I'm gonna start with Ollie. Come here, come here, come here. So what What purpose does a dog have? On a, yeah, you talk a lot, don't you? Yeah. Uh, on a farm, it could be a multitude of things. It could be protecting a, a flock of, a herd of uh, sheep. It could be a flock of ducks or chickens. Um, but what I wanna get to is the importance of uh, intrinsically uh, what it does to have a, a pet animal and and what it does to you by petting them um, When you pet animals whether it be a dog or a cat um, there's a there's a, a Stress hormone that your body naturally uh, Releases into your body and cortisol is a stress hormone it uh, You want it to be low so when you pet animals uh, it's been proven that uh, it lowers your cortisol levels and that could be a dog Or if you have a cat um, That's the importance of petting a cat and the, the companionship that it offers um, They it also boosts the uh, the chemical known as oxytocin uh, It's a it's a feel-good chemical that your body naturally releases um, and That's what having a pet and being able to pet uh, pet a pet uh, is able to offer for you. Now, come here. <laughs> Callie, come here. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you run out and you buy a couple of pigs that you can, you can pet. I'm not sure that uh, if you're a kid watching this, I'm not sure your parents are gonna allow you to have a pig that you can bring in the house and uh, and have on your bed with you. Um, but every morning I get to come out, I feed uh, I feed Red and Callie here, and uh, and I do give them a little bit of a pet, whether it's just a grazing on their back or um, whether they do like their behind their ears scratched. Um, but they're good pigs. As we go back out to the cows, talk about them. These trees are just pretty. They are filled with hoarfrost. This winter would be a photographer's dream come true. And even if you don't aren't a photographer, you can make some beautiful pictures. All right, Patty, you know what these are, huh? Here, I'm gonna hand these to you. Ruby, so, what I'm doing here, I've been trying to coax them into letting me like them, or having them like me. Yeah, so I can pet them. What I've been doing is these little alfalfa cubes, um, they're like a, a drug for them. Once they start tasting them, Patty got a taste for one, and she starts, uh, she goes crazy for them once we get, them, get her going on them. Uh, Ruby here, I can't quite get her to take one out of my hand, and Lucy, she's, She's a little bit uh, skeptical on what I'm, what all I'm trying to do here. Come here, Ruby. Hey. No. All right, Patty. Hey. You want one? Patty, you want one of these? Hey, Ruby. Come here. Come here. Come here, Ruby girl. You want one? They're good. Try it. Try it. You don't dare, huh? Don't you dare? They're tasty. If you go ask Patty, she'll tell you. She scarfed down about six of them the other day. 
Huh? Yeah. Here. No? Don't you want one? Here. Yeah. Come here. You're okay. You're okay. Yep. We're okay. Come here. Come here. Here. I'll put the bucket down. Does that help? Here. Here. They're kind of like Pringles. Once you pop them, you can't stop them. No? Not today? Alright. Lucy, you want to try one? You want to try one? No? Plain hard to get, aren't you? Yeah, Patty, you'll take one. Oh, yeah. That's the spot. See, Ruby? Or Lucy, that's what you're missing. Yep. Now you'll let me pet you, won't you? Kinda. You still playing hard to get? Holding out for more? Alright, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna give you one, you're gonna let me pet you. Come here. Here, no, this one. I'm gonna distract you. Oh there we go. There we go. Under the chin. No. You gonna try that, Ruby? Huh? You gonna try them? Here. I'll take my glove off. Maybe that smells like dog. Huh? Here. No? You just like the petting, don't you? Here. Here. Yeah, there you go. Now you let me pet you. Come on. There you go. Yeah, all the animals like to get pet, except for you two. Yeah, except for you two. Yep, your tongue is turning green. Now when it comes to having an animal, I'm not recommending that you go out and, and buy an animal, whether it be a, a cat, a dog, a, a gerbil, a hamster, a, a snake, uh, or a pig, or a chicken, any of that stuff. Uh, if you look down the road or nearby your, your area, there's probably a farm or people that have animals, uh, especially like dogs that people would love to have you come over and, and walk their dogs for them. Um, just take them around the block or take them for uh, a mile walk, something like that. Um, it'll do both you, you uh, inside, it'll do you a lot of good. Uh, the animal uh, gives them a companion, gives them a reason to stretch their legs, uh, and then the, the owner of the animal. Uh, if you're helping them out, it saves them on uh, chores or time or something that they might have to do. Uh, so it's kind of a win-win-win situation, if you know what I mean. That's about all I've got for you today. I want to thank you for stopping by and uh, watching this video. And I'll see you next time.